So I'm a nutritionist, Marty's a sustainability scientist, and I guess we, we, we come at this from a little uh, different angle, but we're both really interested in the problems of the environment and how diet might contribute to that. There's been a lot of work in the past on looking at a national diet and how that shapes environmental impacts like global warming or uh, water use or land use. Uh, but there's been very little work on what are individuals consuming and how do individual diets make those impacts. And so one of the things we wanted to do was to look at it from the individual level. Could we look at a collection of individuals and look at their impacts? There's been very little work on this anywhere, and particularly not in the U.S. Right. So with a U.S. focus, we were thinking about looking at the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, a database that would allow us to get thousands of people's diets, as well as their health outcomes, to begin to look at this, this question mark about the connection between diet and environmental impact. You know, the reason why thinking about environmental impact of diet is important is because we know that there are big differences in the environmental impact associated with producing different foods. A lot of this comes out of life cycle assessment literature. Life cycle assessments really an accounting method that's used to look at the resources that uh, are used and the emissions associated with producing a particular product. And we know from that literature that animal-based foods carry a much greater environmental impact, carry a much greater environmental load than plant-based foods. So how the composition of a particular diet plays out can influence what the environmental impact is of our food system. We uh, gathered a lot of this literature on the environmental impacts of particular foods, put it together into a database that we could then link up with these uh, diets in the U.S. We found an algorithm to connect the LCA data, the environmental impact data from the commodity level all the way to people's diets. And, uh, and, and then we're able to look at what's the total impact of my diet or your diet or, or uh, people in the samples diet. The interesting piece in this and, and the, the main contribution to research in this area is being able to represent this distribution of greenhouse gas emissions across the whole population. We ranked all of their diets from the lowest greenhouse gas emissions to the highest, and then we divided it into five equal groups, quintiles. And then we compare them. And what, one of the things that we found was that top quintile accounted for 46% overall of all, all the emissions from all the diets, whereas the bottom quintile only accounted for 6%. This is like close to eight times difference mm -hmm. in, in terms of the impact from the top quintile to the lowest quintile. One of the big drivers here is thinking about ways that we can reduce the environmental impact associated with our food system. So those high impact diets shifting to an average emission diet represented something like 10% of the emission reductions that the U.S. needs to make in order to meet our, our international contribution to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So fairly significant, you know, that puts these diet shifts in a um, place of prominence in thinking about climate action. But at this point, it gives us an idea that there is a potential to make a, a, a dramatic difference. There are, there are large differences, and that policy changes, even just by moving the needle a little bit, could make a significant contribution. We're happy that you took a look at this video, and we hope you read the article, and feel free to contact us if you want to know more about it. Thank you.